The AP or Advanced Placement Exams are a series of achievement exams administered by the United States College Board. It's basically an opportunity for universities to see who are the best students in subject areas such as uh, biology, chemistry, or calculus. Um, it's a way that students can boost their university applications. And the very special thing about these exams is that they're completely optional. That means many students opt to self-study, register for the exams, and show up on the exam day and just do it. That was me, and that was the exam room that I did my AP exams in. For me, I realized pretty early on that the subject exams that I was taking had no bearing on what I wanted to do in life, but I still wanted to do these exams. I asked myself why. I realized I wanted to learn and challenge myself. That's a really important lesson, to take charge of your own education because in the end, it's only up to you to make something out of life. I look around the school, and this is not the mentality of the majority of students. People, teachers, and students alike always complain about how poor the education system is. While I do agree that the education system could be better, I really think it's the students' fault. How can a teacher teach if half the students don't even care about what they're learning? Education is spoon-fed and handed down to us. All these exams and textbooks are so picture-perfect, and everything that's going to be on the test is laid out nicely. It's not much learning going on. It's more like memorizing for the test and then right after the test, you dump everything you've learned. These things don't instill a sense of learning in the students. And this is a problem because once students go and graduate and go into the workforce, they have to constantly re-educate themselves in order to stay relevant. A business might ask its employees to go learn a certain course, to get certified for a certain certification. There's not gonna be a teacher there that's gonna be egging you on every day to do the assigned textbook questions. The onus of learning is on you and you yourself. So you better start taking some responsibility for your own education. Also, spoon feeding education doesn't create creative individuals. There's so much buzz and hype around the media about really talented people doing the things that they have a passion for. It's almost like a kind of a philosophy for us millennials. Well, you look up to those people and let me tell you this. Those people took some initiative when they were younger and made themselves into the people that they are today. Look at Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla Motors and SpaceX. He read his entire local library because he wanted to learn. He taught himself rocket science because it was something that he wanted to know how to do. And students continue milling around like they are today, they're gonna find it very, very difficult to find a job that they actually enjoy. It's about maturity. Jali Hazari teaches IB French in Hong Kong. He puts it very nicely. Taking Responsibility for learning means acknowledging that you're responsible for your life as a student. Realize that there's more to life than outside these four walls. Realize that the amount of work you put in now translates to the amount of success you will have in your future. When studying for a test, give yourself adequate time. Don't just study the things that you're good at because it makes you feel good. Study the things that you're bad at. You have to take an objective look at yourself and realize, is this the best version of you that you can be? It's about passion. Students should be learning the things that they want to be learning. Don't force that generational talent in physics to sit in a biology classroom and memorize the glossary. Students will naturally explore their own curiosities and school should be a pathway for this. Provide them the opportunities and resources to go and explore it. The people interested in the course will take charge of their own education. They'll put in the time outside of the classroom to look further into topics. It's a blessing for the teacher as well because if someone actually cares about what they're teaching. It's about finding that flow. If you've done computer science, you might know what I'm talking about. You're sitting at your desk and you're working on a really hard project where your skill level is up to match it. You work, 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 and wow, look at the time. It's 1 a.m. already. This example of time flying should be the goal for all students. Find something that you're passionate about because then the work and studying won't be work and studying anymore. It'll just be a fun, interesting activity for you to challenge yourself. I'm not advocating that you drop out of school. There's a value in classroom learning. I'm advocating that students have a new attitude towards learning. They should want to learn. The idea of getting students to become autonomous learners is well studied. So here are some tips for teachers and students. Mentally check off this list to see if your teacher is meeting these requirements. Number one, have many opportunities for the students to ask questions. Two, have students self-monitor their own understanding of the topic. Three, recognize that learning is individual. Use a variety of teaching techniques to appeal to a variety of learning styles. Four, make a clear connection between what students are learning and how they can use it in their own lives. Five, allow students to go explore their own curiosities. Now, what are you doing? Go out there and teach yourself something cool.